Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today in this video, I'm going to go over a lot of different things that I do to my computer as well as my game settings uh, on how to make my game perform the best that I can possibly make it perform. Uh, so just real quick before I start, this is going to be on Windows 10. So if you have Windows 11, I don't know how much of this applies to you because I've never used Windows 11 and I know that some of the settings on Windows 11 are different than Windows 10 as we will be changing some of the Windows 10 settings as well. Um, Okay, first, uh, so just so I don't forget, I'm gonna start with a program called MSI Afterburner. This program is used to overclock your GPU as well as uh, you can adjust your fan curve on your GPU as well. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if you wanna learn how to do overclocking, any of that kind of stuff, uh, that's a whole nother thing. There's plenty of videos on that, uh, so I'm not gonna cover that. The main thing to do on here that anyone can do, it's real easy, is when you download MSI Afterburner, just don't mess with any of this stuff unless you're trying to overclock right here in the center. <clears throat> you want to go to the uh, settings on here and go to fan, or if you have another uh, program to adjust fan speed, you can do that too. I, this is just the program I use. So what you're, what you're going to want to do is go into the settings, go to the fan, uh, and what I do is I enable user-defined software automatic uh, fan control. So that way I can set my own fan curve. <clears throat> and what I like to set it to is um, you can kind of do it however you want, but the main thing for me here is that you have, once it reaches about 60, 61, 62 Celsius, I have it at 100% fan speed. Because uh, from what I've done research on in the past, this may be different now, uh, but from when I did research back when like the 10, uh, the 10 series cards were a thing, like the 1080 Ti, um, GPUs would start to like lose, uh, they would start to downclock themselves um, at about 62 degrees Celsius. So I just like to set mine at once I hit 61, 62 degrees Celsius, I set it to 100% fan speed. And then I just have it gradually rising uh, from the, you know, from lower temperatures up to that. Uh, and then I also change the fan speed update period. That's default is uh, at 5,000. I set mine to 100 so that way it updates the fan speed quicker. And then I also check force fan speed update on each period. <clears throat> and that's just to help my GPU run cooler while I'm gaming. We'll go to game settings last. So next, what you're going to want to do is type in background. Go to background apps. So just type in the word background and then find the background apps on uh, your windows. And then I turn this off. You don't need this on for anything that I'm aware of to be running properly. Now, if you're running a bunch of other programs on your computer or some other, something like that, I, maybe this could affect those programs. I don't know. I just know that for me, I don't need this for all the different things that I use. And so on the left over here, what I'll do is I'll go over here to diagnostics and feedback. And I like to turn off all of the diagnostics and feedback stuff going to Microsoft. Turn this off to never, and then all of these off. Okay, so next down here in the bottom left again, now, uh, this time type in power, go to your power and sleep settings. I set these both to never, it's kind of just personal preference. Go to additional power settings. Um, you might have to click this, this arrow right here to show additional plans. Uh, pretty much everyone should have a, an option for high performance. Not everyone's going to have the ultimate performance option. In, in order for this to pop up, you need to have Windows 10 Pro. Um, I don't have Windows 10 Pro, I have Windows 10 Home. You can still get this to pop up. Um, there's a way to do it. Uh, if you have questions about it, I'll, I can answer it in the comments. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's like kind of, you can kind of just Google how to turn on ultimate performance on Windows 10. You'll find a video or it's, it's not that hard at all. Um, and also I don't know how much of a difference ultimate from high even really makes. Let's see. Another thing I like to do notifications. This is a big one. Turn off your notifications, which is going to be this. Is, so the notifications thing to know if it's on or not, it'll be this thing. <clears throat> Maybe some of you use it. Terrible. Terrible for video games. Turn all of that off. Another thing, come down here, type in game mode. Go to game mode settings. Uh, some of you might disagree with this. So this could be a little controversial turning this on or off. <clears throat> Me personally, I just turned mine on. I have seen in the past that having this game uh, game mode setting on can hurt the performance with some games. With Tarkov specifically, 
it's really unclear whether or not it helps or doesn't or if it, you know if on is worse or off is worse i have mine on my game runs great all right next down here come to nvidia control panel <clears throat> on the left here go to manage 3d settings Uh, and the settings you're going to want to change here. So you have global and program settings. If you want to change these settings just for Tarkov, go to program settings and then find the, your Tarkov executable. So it'll be, uh, let's see, I don't, yeah, mine's not listed on here. Yeah, I'd have to go find it. Um, I just changed mine for global because this is the only game I play. So the uh, settings to change here. Uh, let's see. We'll talk about G-Sync in a minute. Uh, you're going to want to set this one to prefer, uh, prefer performance, power management mode, prefer maximum performance, preferred refresh rate by default will be on application control. Set that to highest available. Shader cache size. I got to do more research on that setting before I recommend anything, recommend you to set it to hundred gigabytes. Just leave it on driver default for now. Texture filtering, anisotropic sample option. Set this to on. Texture filtering negative LOD bias. Set that to allow. Texture filtering quality. Set that to high performance. <clears throat> Texture filtering trilinear optimization. Set that to on. Threaded optimization. Um, I would say if you have an Intel CPU, set that to on. If you have an AMD CPU, just leave it on auto. Uh, vertical sync. If you're not going to be doing the G-Sync, V-Sync setup like what I've started doing, which I know it's going to be controversial, like having this set to what I do have it at right now, like most settings, guides, videos are going to tell you to turn it off, which in the past I would have told you to turn it off too. However, my game is running smoother uh, than it ever has. So I'm, I'm leaving it the way it is for now. So, But I have a G-Sync monitor. So if you don't have a G-Sync monitor, just turn this off. And also, if you don't want G-Sync and V-Sync on, also just turn it off. But if you want your uh, stuff set up like what I have, and my game's really smooth, or if you just want to try it, see if you like it too, leave that to the, uh, what it's on right now. Uh, and then if you have a G-Sync monitor, it'll say set up G-Sync over here on the left. Okay, so I have three monitors. They all have G-Sync. Um, and I just enable it, and then I enable for windowed and full screen mode. Now we'll move on to the game settings. So here's my game settings. Uh, the automatic RAM cleaner, pretty sure it doesn't do anything, but I have it checked anyway. Uh, now for graphics, I like borderless mode. I think the game runs better. Um, in the past, it's been maybe a year or two since I've done this, but I tested borderless versus full screen for FPS averages, and borderless actually gave me more frames per second. Texture quality set to high. Um, Setting it to high might not be the best option for everyone, depending on their computer. Uh, so I can't recommend like this is going to be the best thing for you specifically. Sometimes medium works better for other people. Uh, if you have a very good CPU uh, and a very good GPU, um, setting it to high is going to give you the most frames. Uh, it's going to give you more frames than if it's on low. Kind of weird. Doesn't really make sense, but that's the way it is. Everything else I have is low. Um, Shadows low. You don't need good shadows. Object LOD quality. This is actually a major setting with performance, uh, especially on certain maps. Um, and in certain areas on certain maps as well. It's kind of strange. So what this setting does is actually affects the render distance of lootable items. Okay, so for example, that shelf I'm looking at that's in the center of my screen. <clears throat> it might be hard to see because it's, it's going to be small. I'm far away. You don't see anything on that shelf. Turn my LOD quality to max. And now you can see that scope that's that's there. Show you again. Back to low. It's no longer there. Step closer, you see how it disappears? L object LOD quality affecting rendering distance right there. Uh, overall visibility, this, I set to 400. I, I have a theory that I think the numbers, the 400, 
thousand, fifteen hundred. I think that means render distance in meters, because overall visibility is literally like render distance for like things in the map. So if you have this on four hundred, you'll notice on woods, you'll you might not see like the background from the other maps, like you know off in the distance outside the map. You set it, you know, all the way to max, you'll see all that stuff the whole time you're on the map. Anywhere on woods, you'll see you'll be able to see the outside of the map. You don't why you don't need to see that stuff. So like in my opinion, it's like why would you not you know sacrifice frames just to be able to see the background? Maybe that's important to you, not me. I want performance. Anti-aliasing off. This is a big. It changes your the way your game looks drastically depending on your setting you have it on. Most people use it on. That's fine if you like that, but off uh, I found actually gives you more frames. Um, but just keep in mind this is going to be the main like one of the main settings and changing the way your game looks. Yeah, all of this is off. And isotropic filtering, this, uh, one of the main things, how do I explain it? So basically it's like the textures of things in the game at angles. So one of the uh, easiest ways to, to notice it is your weapon when you're holding it in, in game. If you have this on, uh, your weapon will look really good, really uh, clear, uh, not blurry or anything. If you have it off, your weapon will, will kind of look blurry and like the textures don't look very good. Uh, that's because it's at an angle when you're holding it. Um, and then I have NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency on plus boost. But keep in mind, I have G-Sync on and V-Sync on. And then I have V-Sync checked here, which you can only check it if this is off. I don't know if V-Sync in the game is working or not. But I have this on plus boost because this is um, the settings uh, good to use if you have low frame rate, I should mention. So if you have like 60 FPS or lower, this is a good setting to use if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, it helps reduce uh, latency when you have low FPS. So that way people with higher FPS don't have as much of an advantage over you. Um, and then also this helps reduce the latency that V-Sync and G-Sync causes when they're working together. Uh, and like I said, this so the way I have this set up, this NVIDIA Reflex low latency, V-Sync on in the game, and then G-Sync on on my monitor and in the NVIDIA control panel, all of that working together is the smoothest my game's ever felt. And in, that's also in my menus. The menus, I don't know, I'm sure you all have noticed the menus are very choppy, uh, very stuttery and laggy when you're switching between hideout and between the different trader menus and the flea market. I set this stuff on the way I have it up, uh, set up right now, and it's the smoothest my menus have ever been. It's still not perfectly smooth, but it doesn't just freeze every time I switch now. Now it's just like kind of like a, it just stutters along, but it's, it, it loads much quicker between the screens now because it's not freezing. Uh, and then, so for these bottom settings, I have to turn all of these off. And keep in mind, like, the, the settings guides for max uh, frames per second, at least for my setup. Some of these settings being on or off, you know, depending on your rig, it's there's a lot of depending on what you have, you know. So if you need help, you can always ask me, you know, in the comments. Uh, I have post effects on. I, I honestly think post effects, having it on uh, affects your your performance, but... I'm so used to the way this looks now. Uh, I had this turned on because of the, the last wipe painkiller effects where you, it was really bad uh, visibly. So I had this on and it would make like your whole screen black and white. So I had to kind of use this to make it easier to see people when I was using painkillers. And now I'm just kind of used to it and turning it off looks really bad to me. But if you're used to it off, I would just keep it off. Uh, that's pretty much it for settings on performance. Uh, if I missed anything, or if there's something else I didn't go over that you guys have questions about, I'm, I could probably help you. Um, I've been messing with game settings for a long time, testing game settings for a long time. Uh, so I know quite a bit about it. And if you need any help, like optimizing your PC or anything, you can message me on Discord or comment on the video, anything like that. I'm happy to help. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the video. I'll see you guys later.